Jessica Wright. Welcome everyone. We're so happy to have you to this uh, webinar on the Dementia Connection and on their Dementia Connection Specialist Certification. It's something that is ideal in partner with the Ageless Grace Brain Health Program. Not only are we working with older adults who tend to be the ones who are diagnosed with some sort of cognitive decline, whether it be one of the dementias or Alzheimer's, et cetera, but we are working with people who may be coming down with the diagnosis of dementia or Alzheimer's. And so in that way, we not only want to know and understand what dementia is, how we can communicate with people who have dementia, how we can follow their journey and join with them to support them and help them uh, to feel more comfortable, but we also want to recognize what dementia is, and we want to recognize the symptoms of dementia so that we know who in our classes, for example, or our workshops, our residents, our clients might be dealing with some kind of issue that is a result of dementia or cognitive decline. And so that's one of the purposes of this to explain to most of you who are Ageless Grace educators or Ageless Grace students that there are things that can help us all understand dementia better and become more of a uh, knowledgeable supporter of people who are experiencing dementia or some sort of other cognitive decline that may or may not be recognized early on. So I want to thank you all for being here and you're gonna probably have every question answered, but if you don't, there will be a question and answer session uh, at the end. And so you can ask questions. You can also type into the chat as uh, you would like to, and we will be sure that you have your questions answered. So first, what I'd like to do is introduce uh, Dr. Jennifer Stelter to you. She's also known as the oil doctor, and she's a clinical psychologist, a dementia expert, and Johns Hopkins press author, and she specializes in dementia care. She has 20 years of experience, even though she looks like she couldn't possibly have that many years uh, in the health field, but she has 20 years experience in healthcare and over a dozen years in the senior living industry. Uh, she is the CEO of NeuroEssence LLC at the Dementia Connection Institute, and she's the innovator and creator of the Dementia Connection model. She's also a master trainer for the Dementia Connection Specialist Certified Trainer Certification Program, and she's the author of the Busy Caregiver's Guide to Advanced Alzheimer Disease. Uh, I also want to introduce to you her business partner in uh, NeuroEssence LLC, Jessica Ryan. She's also called the Oil Mama, and she has 20 years experience also in education and biology. Another one who doesn't look like she could possibly have 20 years experience. Uh, they're both looking young and aging, aging gracefully. Uh, she studied essential oils and its effects on the brain for over 10 years. I've known Jessica a long time. She's the CFO of NeuroEssence LLC at the Dementia Connection Institute, and she's created the olfactory portion of the training in which you're going to learn about in detail today. And then we're going to hopefully have a little bit of insight from one of our own Ageless Grace trainers educators, Peggy Kinst, who has been a wellness specialist for over 50 years, and she has been an international trainer for Ageless Grace for the last 12 years and is now uh, one of the Dementia Connection Specialist Certified Trainers. So she's going to tell you a little bit about her experience. So let me turn it over right away uh, to Dr. Stelter, and uh, you will see that there is a, a power on the screen uh, when she begins to talk. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate your time and everyone's time for being here this evening. We are really excited to bring to you what the Dementia Connection Institute has to offer, as we are the first institute supporting family caregivers and professionals, both nationally and internationally, using the new model of care called the Dementia Connection, which you'll learn about today. Uh, Jessica and I wanted to start off by telling a little bit more personally 
why we got into the field and how her and I actually connected. Um, for myself, as Denise mentioned, I'm a clinical psychologist by trade. And the reason I entered into the field was because I actually went through my own mental health journey for a number of years. And what I finally realized was how many non-pharmacological tools or coping tools worked for me in my experience. And so I wanted to give back when I decided to go to school and become a clinical psychologist. And so I did just that. And so for me, um, in my first half of my career, I worked in mental health with a wide variety of clients and applying the very tools that helped me, but also, of course, during my research and during my education and experience, able to share that love of non-pharmacy to a lot of clients and showed how much success there was. And so when I transitioned over to senior living about 12 years ago and started working with those living with dementia, I realized these very same tools, maybe adjusted a little bit, really worked for them as well. And so I had the opportunity over a 12 year period to trial the dementia connection model. Now at that time when I was trialing, I didn't know what I would call it. I didn't know what, what, it, would, what it would do, right? But in working with staff and caregivers who've never been trained in dementia care, especially nurses and CNAs who come into senior living and they've had no prior education in dementia care, not even in their own schooling, I was just, astounded by this. And so I said, there's got to be a better way to explain what's going on with the person with dementia and how to really connect with them. And that's how the Dementia Connection Model was born. And through my years in working with those with dementia, I had the opportunity to go to one of Jessica's uh, presentations on essential oils. And I said, you know, there's something here that really can be added to the toolbox of what I'm providing to my residents who have dementia why not use essential oils? And so um, I met with her afterwards, Peggy Kinst actually introduced us, which hopefully you'll, you'll meet her today. And uh, Jessica and I just instantly connected and knew that we had a, a passion to really change the lives of those living with dementia and their caregivers and care partners. And so NeuroEssence was born at that time. We focused a lot on brain diseases. We realized you know, when the Dementia Connection model was published and out, we've got to really refine this. And so we opened up the Institute here in January. And so very much have had the opportunity to work with Jessica for a number of years and it's been a wonderful experience. Jessica, do you wanna tell them about your personal journey too? Yes, absolutely. So my name is Jessica Ryan. I actually started off as a biologist and educator. Um, I have a little bit of a different journey reaching this moment, but um, my son actually was diagnosed when he was three, 15 years ago with sensory integration disorder and ADHD, um, at which time they were recommending Adderall. And um, as a psychotropic medication, I recognized the fact that, you know, his brain hadn't been developed <clears throat> and I wanted to try some alternative things so that I didn't uh, alter that brain development. And so I began seeking out a lot of different therapies. And I had a friend who was a pharmaceutical sales rep turned holistic. She talks, I pay attention. Um, and she turned me on to aromatherapy. I was a little concerned in the beginning because I was very Western medicine minded and thought maybe I needed to, you know, pull out my cauldron and uh, and get my witch hat on. You know, I was very uneducated about that. However, one of the things that it was backed with was clinical trials. And so from a biology standpoint, I kind of I decided, OK, we'll try it. And they worked. And Caden is now 18 and he's in college and he's never taken Adderall. Um, and so after a few years of the bottom not dropping out, if you will, I began going to workshops and getting my own education around uh, how by, you know, how the biology and the chemical constituents of essential oils worked inside the body, specifically with the brain. And so I began teaching about it and uh, my teachings led into healthcare professionals. Uh, when I met Peggy Kintz, she walked up to me and said, well, if this works for the brain of children, could this work for the brain of our vintage folks? And I thought, well, you know, I don't know much about it, but I definitely will dive in. And I did and began giving workshops. And that's how I met Dr. Stelter. And absolutely phenomenal. Um, I loved the work that she was doing. Um, you know, she kind of had the same look on her face that I did when I first brought it to her, but she began using it with her patients uh, with great success. 
And so we realized that when we put our heads together, we could really create something. And so we're really excited to bring this program, you know, kind of to the forefront where it really does uh, give you tools and specifically non-pharmacological tools to deal with uh, this growing and very scary disease. So we're really excited to be here and really appreciate that you get to spend the next hour with us. Thank you, Jessica. So I wanted to start off by just talking about how prevalent Alzheimer's disease is because this is really a, a, a factor into why we developed the Institute. And if you, if you look at these stats, they're just astounding. More than 6 million Americans are currently affected by this disease. And by 2050, they're actually estimating over 16 million Americans will have developed Alzheimer's disease. And can you believe that actually someone develops this every 33 seconds? It is the number one diagnosis in seniors, and unfortunately one in three seniors do pass away with Alzheimer's disease or another form of dementia. And it's non-discriminating, it affects men, women, and all ethnicities. When we look at our industry, professional in the field, um, people who were born between 1946 and 1964 are our primary population who are entering into senior living, whether that be independent living, assisted living, memory care, um, skilled nursing, um, it really is something where these folks are moving into these facilities and needing the assistance. And unfortunately, they are coining this generation, the generation of Alzheimer's disease. Because if you look at the stat here, where it talks about skilled nursing facilities and assisted livings, when you look at that population, 80% of those individuals have some form of dementia, whether that be on the spectrum of mild cognitive impairment all the way through the later stages of dementia. So it really is prevalent and it's costly. Right now, it takes about over $230 billion a year in annual cost to take care of those living with dementia. And by 2050, they're estimating over a trillion dollars. And so when we look at this last step that I wanted to share with you, really about where our education still needs to go is 45% of people with Alzheimer's disease or their caregivers report being told of their diagnosis by their physician, while 90% of people with the four most common types of cancer have been told of their diagnosis by their physician. And really what this, this stat is showing is A, physicians still need to get more comfortable with talking about this disease. B, they also need to be educated more about this disease in the various forms, right? C, there's no cure for Alzheimer's disease. And so we just have to get better about how we're really developing treatment plans for those with dementia and really looking at the idea of using non-pharmacological intervention and what we're gonna talk about in the Dementia Connection Model, sensory-based intervention that can really help these folks live a best quality of life because there is no known medical treatment right now that can cure this disease, but we can treat it with non-pharmacy interventions. And so really that's why we um, developed the Dementia Connection Institute, was really to provide an astounding amount of education and spread the love of dementia care. On top of that, dementia education for professionals is a requirement. The Center for, Center, excuse me, the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services requires that there is dementia education in the institutes um, in all 50 states. So whether you're in senior living, you're in hospitals, you're a licensed professional, it's required. And even states are getting on board with this individually. Um, so it's a nationwide requirement and then a state requirement. Here in the state of Illinois, where Jessica and I are from, our governor actually passed in 2023, any healthcare professional who is licensed, regardless if you work with those who, are, who have dementia, and even regardless if you work with seniors, you are required to have dementia education a basic foundation course once a year. So we really want to be able to help um, professionals like yourself and of course our family caregivers, right? Uh, and more importantly, professionals with this CMS requirement to make sure that we are providing the education that is needed. And so again, that's why we developed the Institute. Really our vision with the Institute is that people living with dementia will be able to experience and navigate their new world freely because dementia caregivers and their care partners are better educated, prepared, empowered, right? And how to provide good quality care. In my experience, when I've found that care partners and caregivers are trained, people living with dementia live a such happier life, right? They're free. 
free from any constraints, negativity, controls, judgments. It's a beautiful connection. So our mission really is to bring innovative ways to educate others on dementia and to bring approaches to care that are non-pharmacological in nature, unique, empowering, and successful. And so we hope to share more with you about that today. So at the Institute, we provide a, a wide variety of services, mainly education and training. We'll go more in depth about that here in a second. Now, hopefully in 2023, we do want to uh, come out with our own podcasts and be able to publish some um, a variety of publications. We're doing some blogging right now. And we do offer some consultation and support, which we'll talk about here at the end. So what I wanted to do is I'm actually going to move away from the PowerPoint because uh, for volume purposes, I want to make sure that everyone can hear the video. Um, I want to go and dive into the dementia connection model so you have an understanding of what that new model of care is. This came out last year in October. It was published in the book that I wrote through Johns Hopkins, which I'll show here on the screen in a little bit. And so this is really the basis of our institute and then what we will educate people on through the institute as well. So let me go ahead and play this video on what is the dementia connection model. All too often, we want the best for the person we care for. But time and time again, the interaction just doesn't seem successful. We can use guys. Oops, sorry. Let me try that again. This may be familiar to you. All too often, we want the best for the person you care for. But time and time again, the interaction just doesn't seem successful. We can use guys less connected to the person and potentially sad frustrated and hopeless. The dementia connection model brings together three known pillars in dementia care into one framework. The theory of retrogenesis, the act of habilitation, and using sensory stimulation to create sensory-based information for the person with dementia. The first pillar of the dementia connection model is the theory of retrogenesis created by Dr. Barry Reisberg. This theory says a person with Alzheimer's disease loses brain functions in the reverse order that they learn them. Therefore, all their skills will go in reverse from adulthood to infancy, like how they walk, talk, take care of themselves, cope with stress, etc. Consequently, their chronological age will eventually not match their developmental age. Dr. Reisberg found that those with more advanced Alzheimer's disease may be in a state where their developmental age is anywhere between seven years old to four weeks old. So, although you may be taking care of someone with dementia who is 80 years old, they may have the skill abilities of a young child. However, his theory does not support treating the elderly, like children, although the acceptance of the person's current skill abilities is crucial to understanding what they can and cannot do, and to lower the expectations that the caregiver may have with the person with dementia. This allows you, as the caregiver, to be fully present not blocked by thoughts that lead to sadness, frustration, and hopelessness. The second pillar of the dementia connection model is the act of habilitation. Simply put, it is important to consistently reinforce the skills the person still has. There are two known skills a person with dementia has as the disease progresses. One, because we know their skills are reversing toward a younger state, they will navigate their new world similarly to how infants then children navigate theirs, using their senses to take in sensory-based information. Young ones will use their senses to learn meaning, and then when things are called, from the use of auditory, visual, olfactory, gustatory, and tactile stimuli. Two, they can still feel a full range of emotions. Although they may not be able to express those feelings through words, they try to communicate them through behavioral expressions. Similar to how children communicate before they know and understand words to describe their feelings. To put these together, stimuli from the outside either directly or indirectly influences the limbic system of the brain, which houses our mood and memory. So stimuli can influence our emotions and our memories. When we reinforce our emotional and memory skills in a positive way over and over again, those skills will stick around for much longer. Also, Specifically, the person with dementia will start to associate those positive feelings with you, who is providing the positive stimulation, 
creating a deeper connection. Therefore, the third pillar of the dementia connection model is using positive sensory stimulation to create the sensory-based information for the person with dementia to take in that will influence their emotional and memory skills. So your approach should be using various sensory techniques that are positive and preferred by the person, like playing their favorite music for auditory stimulation, using essential oils that have therapeutic benefits for olfactory stimulation, offering their favorite foods for gustatory stimulation, reminiscing with pictures for visual stimulation, and painting for tactile stimulation. You can influence the person with dementia to feel happy, safe, secure, and calm, and also to be more focused and attentive. How great is that? The key to using the dementia connection model is the three R's, routine, remind, reward. Essentially, consistently use sensory stimulation cues, and it will boost the mood and memory of the person with dementia, and they will feel more connected to you. Also, a bonus, when you feel like you've mastered this, then it will also boost your mood too, and you will feel connected again to that person. All righty, let me go ahead and get back to the PowerPoint here. So when we talk about the three pillars, uh, the first one being the theory of retrogenesis, the really the the important part of that is to really understand, you know, why these things are occurring to the person that you're caring for, really to put yourself in that person's shoes, to eliminate frustrations, to know that although there's a lot of abilities they don't have, they still have a lot of abilities there. They're just experiencing their world very similarly to how an adolescent does, where they're using their senses to really take in a bunch of information and to learn and to navigate. And so the key here is because their ability is to do that, we want to use positive sensory stimuli in order to influence a snowball effect of emotions and memories and behaviors. And that's what makes the dementia connection model a cognitive behavioral uh, um, uh, model and approach to care. So just briefly, I want to talk it about for those maybe who aren't familiar with cognitive behavioral theory, essentially as adults, how it works is there's a situation that occurs and that situation, we may have thoughts about those situations as an adult. And then what happens is emotions are developed based on those thoughts, and then behaviors are created based on those emotions. So it's kind of like a snowball effect of how our mind works. So as adolescents though, how they experience the world is a situation occurs, they may not have formative thoughts just yet before the age of five, but they do have emotions about that situation which then influence memories and influence behavior. So this is gonna be a very similar process to how those living with dementia are going to experience things. So for example, when a person living with dementia experiences a negative stimuli, maybe like an overstimulation in the environment, so it's too loud, it's too bright, it's too overcrowded, they may feel angry, worried, fearful, anxious, but they can't tell you those things. You're going to know that because they're going to show unproductive kinds of behaviors like wandering or verbal or physical aggression. So in the dementia connection model, what we wanna do is we wanna provide as much positive stimuli as we can. So when we think about senses, right? We have five senses. How can we stimulate those positively with having a calm environment or maybe music for auditory stimulation or essential oils for olfactory stimulation, right? What's gonna happen? And it's going to influence positive emotions, like they're going to feel calm, happy, secure. And from there, there'll be some memories that are generated because of the association between you who are providing that influence and the person. And so that person's going to have more productive behaviors like being engaged, having more attention, socializing. And so when we use the dementia connection model, it really helps to explain other models of care that you might be familiar with. Some of these names might be very familiar to you, like Naomi Biles' validation method or David Trexel's best friends approach, Tipa Snow's positive approach to care, Cameron Camp's Montessori method, right? The dementia connection model is not in competition with these. It actually explains why these models are also successful. 
And so within our uh, training, we explain a lot about various of these models and how to use them because the dementia connection model is in place. And if you want to read more about the Dementia Connection Model and a wide variety of tools that we teach upon, um, it is in my book, The Busy Caregiver's Guide to Advance Alzheimer's Disease. That can be found on Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, and Johns Hopkins Press. And so um, with that said, we want to dive into some of the training opportunities that we offer here at the Institute. So we offer two certification programs that actually just came out in the summer. They're brand new. And we went through our soft launch period and now we're live in September offering this to the world. Um, so the first is the Dementia Connection Specialist Certification Program that Denise had mentioned. And that Jessica is gonna review our trainer program. And so what is the DCS? So essentially we're gonna go more in depth on what is the Dementia Connection model as a cognitive behavioral approach to care, which will help you to understand those three pillars that we talked about. And it's really available for everyone, which is wonderful. Um, it's really to help improve your understanding about dementia, as well as the progression of the disease, helping you put yourself in their person's shoes. So that way it really does help you to understand what they're capable of and what they're not capable of. Um, and it allows you to really improve your confidence, your knowledge, your skills in dementia care. A lot of the training we talk about non-pharmacological techniques specifically focused on those five senses and what sensory stimuli would be positive for those living with dementia. And as I mentioned, it's really for everybody. So we're the first institute to open this up to not only healthcare professionals, but also family caregivers. So we do hope that people can take advantage. So what sets us apart with the certification? Because we do know that there's others in the field that maybe you already are certified with, or maybe you were thinking of certifying with. Um, the model of care that I developed is backed by Johns Hopkins. Um, it also, if you're looking, if you're a professional looking for continuing education credits, you can earn that through the seminar as well. Our seminar actually um, exceeds regulations in all 50 states, so you'll be in compliance with those mandatory requirements if you're a professional. It's also a same-day certification, so there's no other kind of steps or nuances, fees. It's all one day and you can be certified right when you're done with the requirements. If you're in a healthcare setting, it helps improve the staff skills, right? Um, Jessica and I have worked with so many uh, frontline staff as well as caregivers, and I, it's just astounding to know how many people just aren't trained in this when they went to school to be a nurse or a CNA and it's not included in their curriculum. And so it can really help improve their skills, you know, not requiring the organization to be the sole provider of dementia training. And sometimes those sole providers of you know, those organizations, they don't have, have experts on their uh, staff who are trained in dementia care themselves. So they look for outside people like myself and Jessica to really do this training. So this can really help improve their skills. And with that comes retention. We do know that a lot of organizations right now are suffering with staffing ratios. And so when staff know that they're invested in by the organization, they feel like they're important and that it's gonna further their career, they're gonna stay longer. So this is a really nice investment for those folks. And what we found is that in my 12 years in developing the model, there were some really great clinical outcomes that came from this, from um, individuals living with dementia who've increased their appetite to um, reduce their stays at the hospital, uh, reducing falls, reducing psychotropic medications, so it's really been a wonderful experience to be able to help organizations improve clinical outcomes. And for our family caregivers, think about your loved ones you're caring for. You know, this is really going to be astounding for those individuals as well. Um, as Ageless Grace educators and trainers, this is going to increase your credibility and marketability. It really is going to help you to kind of raise the bar of what you know. And because this is a requirement for a lot of professionals, that when you go in and you offer this training, they're gonna to wanna to book you because they're gonna to wanna to know um, how to become DCS certified in order to have their organization say, yes, all of our staff are trained as DCSs because a trainer came in. It's fun and interactive, right? So we build in brain games to all of our trainings because A, we know how long it is to sit in front of a 
either it's virtually in front of a Zoom or if it's in person, it's hard to sit there for hours. So we build in brain games to really make it fun and exciting and interactive. But on top of that, because we know the brain so well, when you're using brain games, you actually are being able to retain the information longer. And so with that, it's a, we have increased the learning advantage by including brain games. Also, anyone who takes the DCS receives a workbook. And so you have a wonderful binder that you get here with the curriculum information that you can take notes and refer to after the training. Also, you receive your very own caregiver toolbox, which we call My Toolbox. And <clears throat> this toolbox is absolutely wonderful because we actually go over um, a lot of the tools that we talk about in the training are in this box for you to trial. So you get to play with it in the seminar as well as afterwards. If you have someone you are working with who has dementia, you can use them right away or you can decide to use them when um, the time is right. But you get your own My Toolbox of uh, tools that you can use that are sensory based. And so Dr. Stelter's book is in there as well as part of the toolbox. Yes, thank you. And you also, if you decide to have a group that you want to have trained as DCSs, um, we do offer group discounts as well. So we're going to play a little brain game here just to make it fun and interactive and to increase your learning advantage of an example of what we do in our training. So this is um, the kind of the pretest to the brain game that we're going to use. And so I know you're all muted, so stay muted. You can either mouth the words or you can say it out loud in, in your kitchen or wherever you are in your office. Um, <clears throat> but um, we'd like you to follow along. So with the pretest, we're simply just going to say the words from left to right. Okay. So I'm going to point to each one. I'm going to say it aloud so you can follow along with what I'm doing. So first, red, green, blue, yellow, pink, orange, blue, green, blue, white, brown, red, blue, yellow, green, pink, yellow, green, blue, red. So now this is the real brain game, okay? And what you're gonna do is you're going to say the color of the word from left to right, color of the word, okay? Get your thinking caps on. All right, green, red, blue, yellow, blue, black, red, green, almost got tripped up there, blue, brown, purple, red, green, blue, yellow, black, purple, brown. How hard was that, right? It gets harder as we get older because the skill that we're actually grooming is called mental flexibility. And mental flexibility is one of our executive functioning skills housed in our frontal lobe. So when we do a lot of brain games, we're exercising that part of the brain, which is wonderful. And because this is reading, we're actually exercising our Wernicke and Broca's areas of our brain too. So it's really important that we do brain games to stay healthy. And we include those, of course, like I said, in all of our trainings. And it's just, excuse me, I have a cold and Jessica has a cold. So we're trying to uh, keep up with spirits here. So I apologize for all the sniffling. Um, so let's talk about our curriculum. Uh, so in the DS, DCS curriculum, um, we're gonna go over first, a module on just the basic understanding of dementia, just to give a baseline for everybody. You know, everyone comes from different walks of life. And then we'll dive deeper into the dementia connection model. Then we talk about person-centered care, which is really how to um, create an approach that's individualized to that person. We're gonna talk about how to effectively communicate with those living with dementia, using of course those five senses, right? Uh, ADL intervention, same thing. Uh, dynamic engagement, so how to really engage and how to um, uh, yeah, yeah, react and, and whatnot. How to handle challenging behavioral expressions. You'll have content in your workbook on how to create a dementia-friendly environment, whether the person lives at home or they live in an organization like a facility. Uh, we talk about mention and prevention of abuse because we do know this is a hot topic in this area. And of course, we end with self-care because it's really important that you learn how to care for yourself so you can be strong and ready and prepared to take care of those living with dementia. And so actually all of these modules include the education on the five senses and the tools to use utilizing that within the model. 
So why should you become a DCS? Really because we want to help you decrease any frustrations with the disease. When you're learning more about what's happening, it allows us again to step ourselves into that person's shoes and really understand what they're going through. So we come to accept what is happening and learn how to really effectively connect with that person. We provide evidence-based relevant information and resources. And so we really stay up to date on the research. And so our PowerPoint slide deck that we use, we're constantly updating to make sure you have the most relevant information. You'll have input, uh, validate, and, and deepen your content knowledge on really the how to best interact with that person and care for them. You'll learn how to prepare to apply safe, practical, and effective non-pharmacological techniques that have been clinically trialed and backed by research. Also, it'll help generate feelings of success for you, whether you're providing ADL care, you're engaging, you're communicating, and really, again, helping you to deepen into that yeah, connection with that person you care for, because when they associate you providing positive stimuli, they're going to remember how they feel with you, which makes caregiving a lot easier and it allows you to feel more successful. And there's a whole host of other reasons why to become a DCS. Now the pricing for the DCS is $299. There are no other hidden fees. There's no application afterwards with another fee. It's just $299. And in this, you'll receive six hours of validating training. And if you're a professional that needs continuing education credits, that's included as well. There's no extra fee for that. You get immediate certification that's valid for two years. And after that two years, the recertification process is really easy. You go online, you take three courses on our online Dementia Connection classroom, and you're recertified. You receive the workbook and the toolbox that I talked about. And if you decide to explore more of our courses in the Dementia Connection classroom, you'll get 10% off that annual subscription. Okay, so if you are interested in becoming a specialist, you may also be interested in becoming a trainer. So you can actually take this uh, an additional hour and become a trainer for us where you're spreading the love of this dementia education and raise your credibility as a leader in the field. <clears throat> So what is the DCSCT? So it's a Dementia Connection Specialist Certified Trainer. And what you're doing is you're educating others on the DCS curriculum. So you will actually learn to teach this or bring this into other organizations or to family caregivers by helping to spread the love of dementia education by joining our team. And of course, you'll earn extra money. Um, you can get paid $100 per student, um, or if you're a trainer for an organization, you would be saving them $100 per student. Um, you can train virtually or in person, as we know from COVID, uh, a lot of times this virtual seems to be the way to go, so you want to have that as an option. Who's this for? Healthcare professionals like yourself. Um, you, can, you can do this, um, and like I said, it's only a seven-hour uh, you know, training. <clears throat> So why should you become a DCSCT? Increase your credibility as a treating professional in this field, but also you assist in the widespread need to train others on this disease. One of the main reasons why I got involved in this project was the lack of education that surrounds dementia and the folks who work with folks with dementia. And I was always sort of disheartened to see that there was so much substandard care out there because of the lack of education and training. Um, so you'd be also providing training to staff or family caregivers in the community. It boosts their content knowledge and skill set in dementia care. And of course, the positive uh, effect of this is that they'll have healthy outcomes for the person being cared for, creating patient-centered care. Also, we see that now uh, we're recognizing that there is that lack of education. So now you'll be in compliance or help other organizations to be in compliance with most state governed and CMS regulations requiring a dementia leader in every healthcare organization and senior living. And also you'll be a resource to your organization. I think one of the, you know, as an Ageless Grace educator, I had the unique opportunity to become an Ageless Grace educator out in Durango, Colorado. So I went through and I had to take a very small plane into the mountains of Colorado and I became an educator. 
And it's always been in my head about this movement piece. And it's really one of the reasons why we approached Denise was that it is sort of a missing uh, puzzle piece to our program because we use so much sensory stimulation, uh, we don't have a movement piece. And so we really felt like this affiliation would be phenomenal. So what will it cost you to become a, a, a trainer? It's $19.99. You get those seven hours of validated dementia training. Um, if you need the CEs, seven CEs come with that. You get immediate certification that's valid for two years. Um, you will receive a workbook as well as a seminar, My Toolbox. So as Dr. Stelter said, we do brain games and other different types of interactive, uh, you know, one of the things that sets us apart, we believe, is that we do these interactive and brain games. Um, and so you have a toolbox that you can, you know, kind of use with them. We, we get the, uh, we have glasses for you that sort of uh, make you have macular degeneration. We do a lot of different things like that. And as an educator, one of the things that we were able to bring in was the seven styles of learning. So everybody learns differently, right? And so we try to touch on each of those different uh, modalities of learning to help our trainers become better teachers. <clears throat> Uh, you also get digital marketing materials. So we have a Google Drive that's made for you and we are always constantly updating, but it will be all types of material, whether you wanted to use them for social media or email marketing uh, to present this information and to attract folks to your trainings. And then as a trainer, you receive 20% off of our Dementia Connection Institute's online classroom. Um, so to kind of give you like a, 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 an example of this, if you hosted one seminar with 20 students, you'll have paid for your DCSCT uh, training. This week, until the week or until the day of September 17th, um, for National Assisted Living Week, we have a promotion that's 10% off all of our certification pro uh, programs that are uh, through the end of the year. So anything that you, uh, up until December of 2022, anything that you would like to take, you get 10% off. There's a promo code, it is AL10. I know that somebody will put it in the chat box for you if you'd like to do that. <clears throat> and I apologize for my, my raspy voice. I appreciate you <laughs> following along with me. All righty. Um, and so uh, those are our two certification programs that we offer. But above and beyond that, we do provide a lot of one hour presentations too, whether that be for staff training in you know, various organizations. We also present to the community. We'll go to you know, park districts and, and senior living activity centers and present to them as well. Sometimes we present to families for events or family nights. And so we, we have a wide variety of uh, presentations that we offer related to dementia care. If you go to our website and on the first page and you scroll down, you'll see a button that says uh, CE presentations. Click on that and it will give you all of the presentations that we offer with descriptions and our pricing. Um, so we not only provide the certification programs, but we also do one hour as well. And as we mentioned, we do have a online Dementia Connection classroom that's coming soon. We're hoping to launch this by the end of the year. Um, so that way our, our trainers and our DCSs can go on and research within their two years. Uh, but also this is gonna be available to the public. So family caregivers, other professionals can log on and take education at their leisure, which is really fantastic. We'll have a monthly subscription as well as annual subscriptions available. And then also, uh, last but not least, we provide dementia connection consultation services. And so that can be provided to organizations. And that would look like something if they need help with program development or policy development, if they need um, like supervision around behavioral management, um, if they're looking to refine some of their engagement tools that they use. Um, so a wide variety of consultation that we provide to organizations but we also provide consultation to family caregivers for private one-on-one -on -one sessions. We realize that this disease is difficult um, and it can be frustrating and overwhelming. And so we're here for that support, whether we're providing them education on what to expect to um, letting them process and vent, um, you know, connecting them to resources. We provide those hourly one-on-one -on -one sessions for them as well. And the number of sessions is really up to the person of what they think they might need. 
And so I hope this was a nice tutorial of what our institute has to offer. Like I mentioned, we opened up in January, so we're brand new and we're bringing lots to you uh, this year. We will continue to develop our services as the year goes on, as well as in 2023. So please go to our website at dementiaconnectioninstitute.org and get on our email list to stay tuned on what we're coming out with. Um, if you're interested in our services, you can either go to the website and contact us that way, or you can simply email us at support at neuroessence.org. Um, also on our website, you'll be able to learn more about the certification programs and register for upcoming dates that we have through the end of the year. And as Jessica mentioned, um, through, the, through September 17th, which I believe is Saturday, um, that special is going on. So you can book any training through the end of the year using AL10 as the uh, promo code. Um, so thank you so much, Denise, for having us here. Uh, I'm not sure if Peggy was able to come on or not, but uh, do you know, Denise, if Peggy was able to join us? Yes, Peggy was able to join us. She's on here. Um, and Peggy, I would love to have you uh, I have unmuted you and you can go on and tell us just a little bit about your experience uh, becoming a dementia connection specialist and becoming a, a dementia connection with certified trainer. Well, I think it's wonderful. And I, I, as I said before, I'm, you know, I have been in wellness for over 50 years and taught just about everything. And I thought the best thing that ever happened to me was that I found the Aegis Grace and that I could combine everything that I've learned over the last 50 years and bring it into, you know, my trainings with Aegis Grace. And then, um, of course, I know Jess and I had gone to her about the, you know, doing a program for um, a grab bag for hands. And, um, we met with Dr. Dr. Stelter and they came up with this incredible dementia program. I have been trained in two other dementia programs and certifications and there isn't anything like their program. I am so excited about the different modules and <clears throat> the models and how we can not only bring that into people with dementia and cognitive challenges, but also it changes the world for everybody, whether it's, you know, whether it's working, who we're working with or children, it gives us a new way to look at the people that we are working with, with ages grace, as well as any kind of a, a situation, whether it's a hospital or whether it's a park district or whether it's, you know, whether it's um, in any of the nursing communities. So um, I enjoyed my time with, with Jessica and Dr. Stelter, and I'm very excited about combining the two, you know, whether or not we go into a, a facility as a trainer to um, talk to them about age grace, or we lead in with dementia um, connection, it's, it's a win-win situation. They're both an incredible gift, and, and I couldn't be more happy than to be a trainer and, and to be able to spread what we're doing. Thanks. Thank you, Peggy. Thank you so much. Um, I have unmuted or allowed to unmute themselves if you have questions now, um, which you may have, or if you'd like to type something into the chat rather than speak, you're welcome to do that as well. Um, I personally, many of you know me, uh, and you know that my journey began when my mother was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. And um, I wish, I wish I had had this kind of tools, uh, this kind of support, someone I could talk to uh, when, when that was going on with my mom. I did take some training, but at that time there was very little known about dementia. They were still saying that crossword puzzles would, would help you get better uh, at that time. And of course, we all know that that is no longer true. Crossword puzzles, word games, just make you better at crossword puzzles and word games. They don't delay cognitive decline because they only affect a portion of the function of the brain. And so um, I, I, as soon as I heard about this and having known Jess for a long time and Peggy, of course, for a long time, I said, I really want to explore more about this because I feel like it's very critical in what we do as Ageless Grace educators or trainers working with people who 
highly prone to some form of cognitive decline or dementia. Most of the people we work with are 65 or over, and very many of them are developing cognitive decline, or they're in moderate to advanced cognitive decline. And to understand not only how to communicate with them and support them, but to understand what's going on so that you personally can help them improve the quality of their lives and the rest of their lives is a very big thing because I know for sure that uh, Ageless Grace educators were certified to become Ageless Grace educators or some of you are Ageless Grace students and you're doing that because you have compassion, you care. And so to be able to add this certification to your resume, to your skill set, to your toolbox, I think would be ideal. So anyone who has a question, you can raise your hand. If you look down at reactions at the bottom, you can raise your hand or you can just wave like this and we'll see you. Um, and you can ask a question or type something into the chat. Denise, I'll stop sharing here just so that way everyone can see everybody here. While we're waiting to see if anyone has a, a question or a story uh, or a joke, <laughs> uh, I would like to just remind you all that um, there are so many people that need this. I don't need to see a show of hands to know that every one of you has been touched in some way or another by dementia. It's a friend, it's a neighbor, it's a loved one it's a family member, it's one of your students, it's a resident, uh, it's, it's an epidemic. Um, and we all know that. And so to be able to have some comprehension, some understanding so that we can be of help is really important. But even more so now, I think, since COVID, because most of these people who are living in CCRCs continual care, residential communities, independent living, skilled nursing care, assisted living, memory care, care. Those people have been isolated for close to two years. It's a terrible thing. Many of you also may have been touched by that. Many of you may have talked to people you love through a window on a cell phone or with the window open a crack uh, for months and months, if not longer. And so you know that that isolation has caused a lot of people to fall into decline. So now more than ever, people need ageless grace brain health and the dementia connection. So if you're an ageless grace educator and you aren't teaching or sharing in person, if you aren't teaching or sharing on Zoom, if you are the least intrigued by understanding and knowing uh, more about the dementia connection, I highly encourage you to do something about it. There are people out there that need you so much uh, to improve the quality of their lives. And one of the things that uh, Jessica and Dr. Stelter said uh, and the video made clear was that when you are providing something that feels safe and calming and comfortable, to another person or a group of people, it forms a bond between them and they feel as if they can trust you. And so I can tell you firsthand that I have a close relationship with my students and I have a lot of students uh, taking Ageless Grace because of the way I comprehend, because of my experience with my mother, first of all, I comprehend what's going on with them and have empathy and understanding and connection. And so there's nothing more rewarding uh, than knowing that you're making a difference in someone else's life. Yeah, thank you, Denise. Uh, my name is Patricia and um, hi, I was a um, Ageless Grace. I was very happy, I was certified and um, for my mom, and, and sadly, she passed away 2019. And um, I think this is wonderful. Thank you. We appreciate that's, it. That's all I can say, sorry. But I think this is great. Thank you. That's what I said. I wish I had known more uh, when my own mother 
went through 12 years of, of Alzheimer's. And um, I went through those 12 years with her. I was lucky to be able to learn as much as I did. And that she, I would say her last gift to me uh, before she died of Alzheimer's was to inspire me to do research and find out more about what can we do to prevent, to support, to, to restore, to sustain, uh, to help people with any kind of cognitive decline. Or and um, so that's one reason about what uh, Dr. Stelter and Jessica are doing. And I, I am wanting to share it all with all of you. I, I am going through the certification myself because I really believe in it. Yes, I, I think thank you for sharing that too. It was, uh, I, I was tearing up there. And, and so it's hard to, to comment. And I uh, just want to say that, you know, it's individuals like yourself of why we did, you know, why we decided to develop the Institute and really develop these kind of hands-on learning opportunities so people can feel like they are, you know, able and equipped to take care of someone with dementia, whether again, you're in a facility or you're at home, you know, you want to feel like you know what you're doing. And, you know, in my book, I talk a lot about how this obviously is really imperative for people with dementia, but it's so imperative for you too, because you want to feel that win-win where both of you are winning in this disease as best as you can, right? It's kind of making lemonade out of lemons, right? And so um, with that said, that's really what, why we decided to do this. And so we hope that people will really join on board, whether you're a trainer, you're a DCS, or even just, you know, take advantage of our services because we're here to help. Um, and we really do help make and connect with a lot of people. I think too, um, it's what we're doing is helping ourselves be able to recognize it in someone else. Um, I think I told you the story, but I was at a net, I had gone through the dementia training and had all the glasses and everything on. And so I, I mean, I was in tears after I experienced what it was like to have dementia. And I was at a networking group and people were all laughing and drinking wine. And there were, you know, people in rooms on each side. And this little, this little vintage lady came out and she was with her walker and she stopped in the middle of the room and she looked around and she started screaming saying stop making all this noise i can't stand it and you know there were people that were senior service providers that actually said what's wrong with her you know and laughing and thank goodness i had that training or at least the experience of it because like it was so overwhelming for me because I, I, you know, I got up and, and, and walked with her, but she, no one, if we didn't have this ability to understand, we wouldn't have the ability, especially in working with the people that we do when we do our trainings or we do our classes or we do work with, you know, with any population to be able to, to understand and treat them with some dignity and, and respect and kindness. And, you know, like you say, they are now, you know, re re regressing as children, but we don't treat them as children. You know, we respect them as, you know, they may have been lawyers or doctors or whatever. And um, to me, that's like really sad when, when we just look at them, when people look at them as old people, you know, and that they're crazy and things like that. But this will help us in all aspects of our life to be able to treat people with more kindness and with more dignity. So thank you for that, because it's, it's I think everybody in the world should take this. And um, yeah. Yeah, thank you, Peggy, because that was very important to bring out too, because I'm, I was like that too. I could see, but I don't know why yes. the, um, you know, so-called nurses and that couldn't see that. And I think I was ahead of my time, but why I shouldn't be ahead of my time. This should be something that should have been available all along or should be taught in nursing. Um, and it's just... Um, yeah, I'm just so grateful that this is available now. Yeah, for thank sure. you. Yeah, for sure. I think one of the, the most uh, touching things that I ever really saw was a lot of, you know, family do not understand what's going on, right? And I had, I, I remember several times where people would come to me and, you know, I come to visit mom and I don't know what to do. 
you know, I sit in the room, I don't really understand what's going on. I don't know how to comfort her. I don't know what to do. You know, sometimes you hear them say things like, no, mom, you remember, you don't work or, oh, you do this or, you know, and, and unfortunately, that's not the, the right thing to say. It's not the appropriate thing to say. And the really unique part about this training is that we offer you a ton of tools to use. So even if you're not a healthcare professional, it gives you tools to use when you're around maybe a loved one that maybe before you really didn't understand or you didn't have any ideas of what to do to try to help or you know sort of solve uh, the behavior. And so it, it's a unique experience to be able to say like, well, I'm kind of equipped now. You know, I know that about four o'clock, I'm going to start going through some frustrating oh. things because now I understand sundowning or whatever the case may be, right? Then I've got a toolbox of things that I can do to either prevent the behavior or to calm the, the, the situation. And so that you know that i think is is immeasurable when it comes to what we're doing and that that's one of the reasons why i really fell in love with dr stelter is she came in with all of these tools that were not you know didn't run to the pharmacy right away to just you know suppress those with psychotropic medications right which by the way unfortunately put a you know the, the gas on cognitive decline so we're really, you know, opening up the doors to different types of modalities to really help, you know, our loved ones and our residents and, and those around us. And you have to read her book because it's excellent. It's, it's wonderful. I mean, I, I learned so much more, even with Dr. McKay. I mean, I learned so much about the brain and, and it's just, it, it's just wonderful. Thank you, Dr. Stelter, for the book. And we do hope to, to, once we feel like we've really covered the land of professionals and caregivers, we do hope to go into nursing schools actually and offer this to really kind mm -hmm. of get to the helm of where this is starting, which is again, nurses and CNAs not really understanding the disease when they're hired into senior living environments. And so we hope to uh, bring that to them as well as uh, first responders really need to be trained in dementia care. And we have a lot of communities becoming dementia friendly, which is fantastic, but librarians and grocery workers, they need to be trained as well. And so we do hope over the next few years to be able to expand this training out to them as well. Absolutely. In my personal experience, um, I have been in a number of situations where it, be, it was clear to me because of what I do and where I am working with seniors all day with so many of them with dementia that, uh, that people didn't understand that was what was happening with this person who was, I don't know, causing an issue, who was uh, needing help, who was needing assistance, who couldn't explain themselves, whatever the case was, uh, they didn't have any understanding. Like they just thought like, you know, like Peggy mentioned before, like what's wrong with this person? Why is this person asking this? Why is this person behaving this way? Why won't this person respond to me? Um, I actually don't know how it would happen exactly, but I feel like everyone, Everyone should have uh, training to understand what dementia Absolutely. is and how it works. Uh, whatever your job is when you are out in the world uh, interacting with other people, sadly now you will see it in the grocery store and the drug store. Um, I just saw it today. I was in CVS uh, and a gentleman was completely lost and confused inside the store. And I recognized what, what right away what was going on with him. Um, but you know, everybody else was just annoyed because he was so slow. Um, so thank you for what you're doing uh, with the Dementia Connection. And I will say again, we have so many Ageless Grace educators and students and trainers uh, on the program that um, this is a just the same way they say that the Dementia Connection needs a movement component. That's what we are with Ageless Grace. Ageless Grace also needs to understand who we're teaching, who we're sharing with, why they react a certain way and how we can help them. Uh, so it's a beautiful dovetailing of uh, two different techniques that help the same person. And um, I thank you both so much for sharing with us. And there will be a follow-up email to everyone. It'll probably be tomorrow sometime, maybe toward the end of the day uh, that will have this recording on it. And I would actually encourage you to share it with someone. If you know someone else, and I bet you do, 
uh, who has been concerned about their own cognitive function, who has a family member, who has a neighbor, who's an ageless grace educator and isn't on here, um, please share that video with them, pass it on uh, and let them know that there is something that they can do that can make a difference. I think there's one more question. I don't want to butcher your name. Are you Tara or Tora? Hi, um, I'm uh, in Christchurch, New Zealand, and uh, Denise, I did an Ageless Grace course with you a few years ago, and it was beautiful. I just wanted to question about the essential oils. So I have a, a very dear friend who's in a retirement village now, and I have noticed um, a degree of decline. I think there's more medication being used than she would have used at home. She was a bit more holistically inclined before. Um, what's your feelings around offering her the option of taking coconut oil? Um, and I use essential oils as well. So uh, would that work okay with whatever medication she's on without rocking the boat too much? Or So it's a great question. Um, there are a few essential oils that I would say to keep away from. So clove and wintergreen typically are not something that you would do or use with our vintage folks, if you will. Um, wintergreen is actually acts as a natural blood thinner. And typically that's one of the things that we see Coumadin, those types of things are on. And clove uh, essential oil typically will actually increase or exacerbate uh, you know, what you're using as medication. So it will actually alter the, the outcome of the medication. Other essential oils, um, and each one is different, but mostly will complement. And what you'll actually see is less need for medication. So if you use specific essential oils that have, you know, I don't know how well versed you are, but um, you know, there, and you can always send us a question if you have, if you know their, uh, you know, her specific medications that she's on, I can give you some suggestions of what to use with that, you know, but a lot of those chemical constituents, what's really interesting is they cross the blood brain barrier. And so they have a positive effect on different types of, the, you know, different parts of the brain. And, you know, so based on that, it would depend on what you're seeing, you know, so as the cognitive decline occurs, you know, if she's going through things like, you know, frustration, anger, you know, she's fearful, those types of things. Lavender is always going to be a great calming experience. Um, you know, there's a handful that we, we recommend, um, you know, so rosemary or peppermint for focus. Um, lavender is going to be calming. This can be great for a bedtime routine, those types of things. But if you have specific needs, I'd be happy to, you know, you can send me an email at support at neuroessence.org. I threw it in the chat box. Um, but yes, it's actually a great complement to, to, you know, even Western medicine. So. And do you think the same with co using coconut oil? Because there was some studies done about coconut oil being good for the brain as well. Have you found that to be? Yes love coconut oil it's one of our favorite um carrier oils and you know has the least uh, contraindication of any carrier oil so. and what we do too is not only you know to kind of um accentuate what jessica is saying is within the certification programs we go into detail as to you know what's the best way to use them what's safety around it how to apply it and then um for each area like whether it's ADL care or you're trying to communicate effectively or you're trying to handle some challenging behavioral concerns right which oils are best for all of those things so not only do we go into how to use them and all of that but we're also going to give you details on on you know which oil will help with which aspect of what you're trying to treat um, and then in our workbook we have a really nice table um, like a reference table of uh, this information as well. So you have kind of a go-to, which is wonderful too. Right, thank you. Do you have a date of when your next um, uh, Dementia Connection Specialist certification will be? Or yes. your next Dementia Trainer certification will be? Yes, so we have a virtual session actually scheduled for September 28th. Um, it's a Wednesday, I believe. Um, I think it is. Um, yeah, September 28th is our next virtual session. Um, and then 
Um, we have a couple in-persons if you're in Illinois, we do have a couple in-persons that we offer, but a lot of it's virtual because we are trying to reach a, a broader audience, but yeah, end of September. And so each month we offer one virtual and one in-person. And then uh, so far our trainers that have come on board with us, uh, they're offering more virtual trainings right now. Um, we have a trainer out in California, we have um, one in Florida, and then we have a couple in Illinois here. So um, because we're so new, the market's not saturated. So there's a lot of opportunity for trainers to train in your area with no competition, which is great. Um, so we do welcome people, but yeah, end of September is our next one. Thank you. And she, we did publish in the chat, the email address and also the website uh, that you can go to. Um, and uh, we hope you will do that. Any other questions? Chris, Chris has her hand up. Thank you. Um, someone mentioned a book that the doctor wrote, and I, I don't have the title or the author. Absolutely. So I'm the author, um, and the um, book is called The Busy Caregiver's Guide to Advanced Alzheimer's Disease. And you can find that at Amazon, Johns Hopkins Press, or Barnes and Noble. So I'll say that again, the, the Busy Caregiver's Guide to Advance Alzheimer's Disease. Very good, thank you so much. Anyone else? Elaine. Hi, I just wanna say thank you. And I'm in Canada, so I'm very curious um, and very interested. And I know I spoke with Denise privately there and she said that you guys are working on like international certification. So should I kind of hold off a little um, or would it still be okay to go ahead with the training? And then I'm just curious, what's the best way? So I think right now, you know, we're trying to embark upon the international certification component. So our content is obviously relevant internationally, but um, in order to be able to um, train others to become DCSs, um, there needs to be that international certification component. So we're looking into that and we hope that we can answer to you soon. So Elaine, if you want to shoot us an email at support at neuroessence.org and give us your information, we can stay in contact with you when that is solidified. Perfect. Thank you very much. Absolutely. This is just my two cents worth. And I was I was saying this to Elaine a little bit. Um, in Ageless Grace, we have that you become an educator and then you have to spend a minimum of 52 to 56 hours practicing what you've learned before you can become a trainer. So I my two cents is like go for the certification uh, and, and practice it and use it. And by the time you feel really comfortable with that, then there'll be international certification for you to become a trainer. And, and Elaine, we'll, we are working on that now. So it's not gonna be something that's gonna be far out, you know, I mean, hopefully within 2022. And, you know, so you could definitely do that and get familiar with the material and, um, you know, cause it's, it's, it's not an if, it's just a when. And so if you take the DCS, um, how it works and you want to become a trainer is the money that you paid towards the DCS, the 299 actually will get credited towards your certification, become a trainer. So you don't have to pay the full 1999. We'll put the 299 towards the 1999 to save you money. Perfect. All right. Well, thank you very much. This was awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Elaine, for asking that question, because I'm from Ontario, too, and you can see the need, as I do, how this is very important. Canada as well. Well, I thank you all for being here, and I thank Dr. Stelter and Jessica and Peggy so much for giving their time to be able to share this with all of us. And... Um, uh, we will also be putting this video recording in one of our newsletters, so it will go out again. But again, I, I encourage you to share this when you get it. Uh, it's, this, is, this is not a secret. Uh, this is something we'd love to have broadcast to as many people as possible, uh, that there is something you can do. So I hope you'll share the video when it comes. Even if you just share it with one person, you never know whose life you might touch uh, in a positive way. So I hope you all have a wonderful
or morning for those of you who are on the other side of the world uh, and uh, late night for some of you who are, are, are just a little bit ahead of us. Thank you all for being here and showing up and uh, many blessings to all of you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Or morning. Night. Yes. <laughs>